Hi folks. In this video I'm going to review the Xtool P2 laser engraver. The P2 is a relatively sophisticated desktop engraver that has a powerful 55 watt CO2 laser and dual 16 MP smart cameras for accurate positioning through Xtool's Creative Space software, as well as a lot of great features like autofocus and auto measuring material thickness, a smart fill function for batch engraving, curved surface engraving, and automatic pass through for engraving long objects. The machine is shipped in a sturdy cardboard box and wrapped in thick foam for protection, but it weighs close to 100 pounds so it took a bit of effort to get it on the table and unbox it. More contents are packed inside of the machine as well, which include the instruction manuals, some cardboard and basswood samples for testing, a power cable, USB cable, and a few tools for assembly, a funnel, a liter of antifreeze, and a flexible exhaust hose. Below the bed is a tray that collects debris and protects the work table when the machine is in use, which currently holds a couple of pieces of acrylic samples that can be removed by loosening the screw that holds the tray in place and pulling it out from the front of the machine. After unpacking, I checked all the drive belts and made sure that the laser module could move around the work area freely before removing the screws for the back panel so that I could check the laser tube for any cracks or breaks that could have happened during shipping. CO2 laser tubes need to be kept cool and this is done by using water or a mix of water and antifreeze, depending on the climate where you live. So once I verified that the laser tube was in good condition, I moved on to filling the coolant reservoir with a mix of antifreeze and distilled water based on the ratio recommendation in the instruction manual for my region. The filling procedure is done in two stages in order to completely fill the system. After the first fill of antifreeze and water, I unlock the emergency stop switch and turn the machine on to let the solution cycle through the system and create more space in the reservoir before topping it off with the recommended amount. After the coolant was added and no leaks were found, I reinstalled the back panel and started setting up the smoke purifier. In the box for the purifier we have the power cable, hose adapters, a flex hose, the purifier itself, and a spare filter. The airflow can be regulated with this dial on the front. The power switch and cable are located on one side. And the exhaust port is located on the other side. The intake port that connects to the engraver is located on the top of the purifier, which can be easily removed so that the filter material can be changed when needed.
After the purifier was set up, I turned everything on and placed a piece of 3mm basswood plywood on the bed, then connected the engraver to my laptop and opened the XCS software. The first thing that I did was open the test file that Xtool provided and refresh the main camera so that I could size and position the image to fit over the workpiece. Bear in mind that this camera is mounted to the back of the machine. A second camera is also mounted to the module which can be moved and used to take smaller close-up pictures directly over any part of the work area that you want for more accurate positioning. Once I was happy with the position, I checked that the material thickness setting was correct and then pressed the start button. A preview window is then opened and after verifying that it looks good, I click the start button again to export the file to the engraver. Then I press the large start button next to the smart screen on the engraver to begin the job. The lid automatically locks when the job starts and the smart screen provides quick information like the job progress, cooling temperature, etc. When the job finishes, the lid stays locked for another 10 seconds while the fan removes the rest of the fumes. It looks like it can cut 3mm plywood fine without any charring, so I'm going to step it up to a 19mm thick pine board and see what this machine can really do. After placing the pine board, I refreshed the camera and the software and drew a 25mm square box over it. I then changed the processing type from score to cut, then I set the power to 90%, the speed to 3mm per second, and the material thickness to 19mm before starting the job. The laser made it through in one pass. I think it could probably cut a thicker board, but there is a bit of charring and a slight deviation in the laser curve near the last millimeter or two of the bottom of the piece, so I would say this is the max thickness of wood that it can cut with reasonable results. Next I wanted to try engraving a portrait of my dog Jade. In the software I chose to use the grayscale mode, then set the power to 5% and the speed to 100 millimeters per second. This turned out really nice. Of course, like any engraver, the slower it works, the more detail it can produce. Next, I wanted to try engrave something simple at this engraver's max rated speed of 600mm per second, so I chose to engrave my logo into a piece of MDF with the power set at 35%. This turned out pretty good as well. I don't see any problems with it. Being able to engrave reasonably at this speed would be a big help when mass producing large items like this charcuterie board. 
Having a 24 inch wide work area is also something that I really like about this machine, as well as the fact that the work area is expandable, but I'll talk about that more in the next video after the base riser and conveyor feed are delivered. They were supposed to be shipped with the engraver, but they were out of stock at the time, so they'll be shipped when they have more inventory. Next, I moved on to testing what this machine can do with acrylic, and started with the same test cutting file that I used for the basswood plywood earlier, which worked out fine and gave me a good benchmark for stepping up the settings to cut 9.5mm thick acrylic. The P2 should be able to cut acrylic that's up to 20mm thick, but this is the thickest piece that I have in the shop, so it'll have to do for now. I've never owned a laser that could work acrylic, but something I've always wanted to try is making a light display with it. So I gave that a try with an old scrap piece that's been kicking around the shop and scratched up a few times. It's not the prettiest, but it's a good candidate for testing in case I make a mistake. As I mentioned earlier, the P2 can also perform batch engraving, but what makes it unique is the Smart Fill feature in the XCS software. With this feature, I can just randomly place my pieces in the work area and position the image that I want to engrave over one of the pieces in the software, adjust the power and speed settings for the image, then click the Smart Fill button and the software will use the camera to recognize the shape and position of the other pieces and automatically place the image over them exactly the same as the first piece. One more thing that I want to show you folks is how this machine can engrave curved surfaces. Since the base riser hasn't arrived yet, I've got the machine raised on some wood blocking and removed the bottom tray so that I can demonstrate how it can engrave a curved surface on the rib of my ukulele. After placing the ukulele, I switch from slats flat mode to curve process mode in the software, then click the curve measure button. A window opens that gives instructions on how to establish the work area by marking the front left and back right corners using the directional buttons to move the laser pointer over these two points on the workpiece and then pressing the mark button to mark them. With the work area established, a new window opens that shows a grid of the work area with multiple dots that represent points on the surface that the laser is going to take vertical measurements from and generate a 3D model of the curved surface. Here I can adjust how precise and smooth the model will be by increasing or decreasing the measurement density. Then I click start and the engraver takes all the measurements and generates the model automatically. Once the model is generated, I can further adjust the smoothness before clicking done and placing the image that I want to engrave in the work area. It's important to note that the image should not be placed based on the background image that the camera takes. With the camera mounted to the back of the machine and the surface being curved, using the background image for reference instead of the work area that was just defined would result in misplacement. After the image was placed and the settings were adjusted, I started engraving. Notice how the laser nozzle moves up and down to follow the curve and maintain the focal point.
So that's it for this video, folks. As you can see, the P2 is a versatile machine and I feel really fortunate to have one in my workshop. I'm absolutely loving it so far. If you're interested in getting one for yourself, then I included links in the video description. As I mentioned earlier, I have a few more accessories coming for this machine, which will be featured in separate videos. So if you enjoyed this one and you'd like to learn more about what this machine can do, then be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the follow-up videos. Take care, folks.